So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I'll go ahead and preface this. This is a, a great way to start your YouTube channel, I guess. Uh, if you notice any continuity errors, I shot this uh, episode slash blooper reel, whatever the fuck it turns into. Um, I shot it in two days. Uh, the first day I didn't have all the equipment I wanted and me being the prissy little shit that I am, I wanted to have my value of production that I could at least maintain at this level. Uh, so I scoured my house for the memory card, found it, now I've got two cameras, so I get to do this. Camera one, camera two. Camera two, camera one. That's going to be so much fun when I go and edit this. It's going to be fucking crazy. Well guys, um, I introduced it in the last one too, but I'm, gonna, I'm just going to basically replicate what I did. Uh, the other night, and hopefully it actually goes better this time around. Um, had a lot of, I was on the struggle bus for making tortillas, I'll say that, you know. Um, my name is Sean Singleton. It's maybe one of the only times I'll identify myself on this channel. Um, this is Chef Kingston. Uh, it's, it's a nickname from high school. It's literally just the singer, Sean Ki or the rapper, Sean Kingston. There's no hidden message there. I don't know, it was one of those senior freshman things. Someone just screamed that at me during band. Because obviously I'm a band nerd. It's not like I earned the name in football or wrestling or something. You, you knew that. When you, when you clicked on the channel, you saw the thumbnail of me. You saw the little picture. You knew it wasn't going to be that kind of a person. This is obviously someone who spent a lot of time in a kitchen growing up. It's not like I was making steak for protein binges. I'm just ranting now and I apologize for that. Welcome to Chef Kingston. Uh, maybe we'll call it Chef Kingston's Kitchen. I don't know. At least that's CKK, and it's not something that starts with K, because that's an unfortunate abbreviation for something unrelated to racist horse shit. Ranting again, guys. Okay, here we go. Today's episode, and kind of my first test shots, uh, if this doesn't make a full episode, you're going to see it chopped up into a blooper reel, which I probably wouldn't include this little bit here where I'm expanding upon the fact that I'm creating a blooper reel. And if it makes it into an episode, I guess it'll be kind of weird, like made of. Like, I, We're gonna make tortillas today. I've got all the ingredients here. I've got my cast iron, ungreased. You want an ungreased cast iron skillet? It's the closest thing to imitate a Mexican comal. Uh, when you see like actual tortillas or places that make tortillas, you know, kind of like a bakery pumps up bread. Uh, in Mexico and in other, you know, Latin heavy communities, they have tortillas where they just pump out tortillas all day. Um, in those settings, and you know, I don't, I don't speak from knowledge here, but I'm just saying you're more likely to find something made from like a fresh ground masa there than you are, say, when you make them at home. When you make them at home, if you don't have access to someone who's freshly grinding hominy, because believe it or not, when you buy corn tortillas, they're not made from corn explicitly. They're made from hominy. Um, tortillas, especially, well, corn tortillas are made from masa harina. It's an instant, um, it's like a nixtamal type flour. I'll show you what I got here. Um, Masa Brosa is the brand I always buy. You can find this in the Hispanic section of your local grocery store. You can find it in Hispanic grocery stores in your neighborhood. Um, it's just an, it's ground up hominy. That's all it is. It's a flour made from hominy. And hominy is corn, but it's corn that's been soaked in a very, very basic lye solution. Uh, and when I say basic, I don't mean to, um, I don't know, play down its actual pH level because it's, it's a very caustic solution. And it's this chemical reaction that happens when you soak corn in like a basic solution like lye or like a, a water mixed with soda ash that creates, you know, like a, a caustic environment. It's, uh, it's this weird alkaline reaction and the corn puff, if you've ever seen hominy, uh, the corn puffs up, it looks super weird, it looks like a, a corn nut, basically, that's not toasted and covered in shit. Uh, so, it, that's what hominy is, and then they dry it and grind it up, and you get masa harina. So, let's go ahead and just get to the recipe. I, I'm jawing on a bit too much, you know, eh? Uh, two cups of masa harina instant, instant masa harina, I don't know why I said that out of order. Two cups of that. To that two cups of masa harina, we're going to add, this is about a cup and a quarter of just tap water, nothing fancy. Um, I like to go warm. This has been sitting out for a while, so it's, it's room temp. Uh, 
rural, you know, not rural Oklahoma, Tulsa, Oklahoma, October. I mean, you were probably talking, you know, like if you really want to be technical, this might be 75 degrees Fahrenheit. I wouldn't worry about it. Just get some, get some goddamn water out of your faucet. Okay. It's not hard. A cup and a quarter water goes in. To that, we're going to add a little pinch of salt. It's got some salt here, a little pinch of your salt. That's all that it actually takes to make corn tortillas. The part that makes this interesting for corn tortillas, have you seen, I mean, they've got tortilla chips now in the grocery stores where they've got like flavors to them. Um, you can do that same principle at home and I like to do it a lot too. And the main ingredient I use is chili flake. But I mean, if you actually ever delve into spicy food and chilies, you'll see that there's just tons of options. Um, so I've got a little selection here. Uh, the one that's a standard in my recipe for tortillas, I'll explain. And then I've got a couple things that just because I had it on hand, you know, I made some tacos al pastor the other week. Um, so I had this for making the marinade. But it, I mean, anything works in here. Whatever you want to put in your tortilla, you can. Um, I hate to use that word because I feel like a, a fucking douche, but infuse flavors into your tortilla. Pick flavors that you think make a creative backdrop. If I, if I, ever, if I ever start not wearing a hat on this show, it's because I'm trying to probably emulate Bob Ross. Because if I fluff this, this up, what's under here, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna have a white man fro like him, and then I can do some peaceful cooking thing for you, and I can be, uh, as, as one of my favorites, Pat Oswalt defines it a uh, audible quaalude. So uh, you got that to look forward to. If you subscribe or, you know, if you at least just follow along with me, I, I really don't know what I'm doing. I'm gonna be honest, uh, we're, we're gonna take, I'm gonna preface this. I have no idea what I'm doing here. So if you hate, if you hate this show, please comment it. I want you to. And I, that's not, that's not me asking for like hate mail or pain. That's just, you know, like help me out, man. Like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to emulate as best as possible what I enjoy watching on YouTube. Um, see now here I'm looking at camera two. This is a, this is a camera two now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. So if you guys have suggestions, go ahead. You're not gonna bother me at all, at all. I left the battery on on my mic. I'm gonna check that real quick. Nope, we're still good. We are straight shooting, my friends. So we got that cup and a quarter of water in here for the two cups instant harissa, and we got a pinch of salt. The salt is really up to you. It's not an exact amount. We're not baking anything here, so you're not utilizing the salt. Um, it's not gonna negatively affect um, yeast activation or attenuation rates like you would worry about in a bread recipe or a baked good. This is a very simple, it's a hot cake made with a uh, hominy meal in its plainest sense. Getting back to the flavors, we got sidetracked there, getting back to the flavors. Uh, the standard I always love to put in my corn tortillas because of the color and the flavor and it's a nice fusion element. It's very unique. I like to use uh, gochugaru. It's a Korean chili flake. Nothing about this is going to give it an inherent Asian or, uh, you know, gingery soy. When you, when you hear the word Asian, you kind of connotate that in your head. You're thinking like, oh, ginger soy, you know, wasabi, sesame oil. That's not what this is about. This is just a different kind of a chili. Um, different chili. I mean, chilies are inherently new world. However, there are old world varieties of chilies, and the Korean is going to be more of an old variety. Um, I like to use this in here because the flakes are decent sized. They're pretty, they're pretty hot. So I only use a little bit and you just kind of feel it out. I'm not, we're not baking here guys. Just eyeball it. Okay. I, we don't use measuring cups. One of my, one of my favorite quotes, and I don't know who to attribute it to, uh, measuring cups are for horse jockeys and yoga instructors. Okay. I, I'm not either of those things. So we're not going to use uh, measuring cups. We're going to feel this out. We're going to do what feels right. I got a decent amount in here. Um, I think you can kind of see there. Um, next, I'm going to use tagine. Again, easily found in any Hispanic section, Hispanic grocery store. All this is is chili flakes, um, dehydrated citric acid from lime juice and salt. So it's really great. It's kind of like uh, if you've ever had a chilada cup or a michelada cup from like the Mexican grocery store. If you haven't, trust me on this. It, like I hate red beer, but I will drink the shit out of these. It's just you buy them in the store, they're like a buck a cup, it's styrofoam, it's rimmed by like an inch and a half with just this awesome chili salt, 
They give you a little packet that's like a dehydrated Bloody Mary. You throw it in the bottom, you throw a lime in there, you throw your beer, maybe some hot sauce. Delicious way to cool off in the summer. Look, Chilada cups, they're amazing. Don Chilada is one of the brands I always buy when I find it. This is essentially what's coated on the outside, minus I'm sure a lot of chemical fillers. I know this is a cooking show, guys, I, I get that. Chemical fillers aren't always bad. You know what's fucking awesome? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not ever gonna be one of those people that's gonna shove it down your throat when I'm like, you really need to let the ingredients speak for themselves. There's a time and place for that, and then there's a time and place for jacking up a sauce with MSG. Do you want to experience life, or do you want to just haphazardly pass through it? We're not, we're not doing the latter of those on this show. We're fucking going balls to the wall, bold, ripping the knob off at 11, man. We're going for flavor. Um, this is a less chemically additive version compared to a chilada cup, but it gets the point across. Um, tagine, this is the classic. You can get a habanero flavor. I've not tried that yet. I want to. Um, my, my fiance, you know, I, I have to be real careful with spicy food, so I try and make sure I don't have the uh, tools of destruction available to me all the time. So some uh, classic tagine here, just a little sprinkle, a little sprinkle, sprinkle. So it's got some salt in it. We don't want to oversalt this. Not because it's going to affect it again, it's just taste. You don't want to do that. Um, I've got here, this is what I was talking about before from my Al Pastor tacos. I've got two ground chilies, I've got a pasilla, and I've got a New Mexico. Um, I love both of these. Probably my favorite is the pasilla. Uh, pasilla ground chili. It's just, it's this meaty, kind of earthy, round noted flavor. It's delicious. Um, and I like to use, not, not a whole lot of this, because you want to give it some color, but you really want the flavor of it. Oh, it's good. It's, uh, the best way I can describe it closely, and again, this is only if you're, if you're adventurous enough to try them. If you ever try those Mexican candies that are like tamarind flavored or watermelon and they're covered in chili, that's the flavor, that's the scent of what you're uh, getting there is the pasilla chili. That kind of tangy, fruity note to it, almost chocolatey round tones. It's, it's delicious, I love the pasilla. New Mexico is a bit more, I don't know, it's squarish, it's a bit more vinegary. It's not as sweet of a tang, it's not a candy tang, it's more salad dressing tang. So we're gonna hit it with a little bit of that. And seal that back up. And put both these away in the spice chamber, spice cabinet, whatever you wanna call it. It's really my spice cabinet. I'm uh, OCD enough that I have my actual spice cabinet alphabetized. That's just my ethnic area. No, that's not racial segregation, that's just, I keep the more complex, interesting stuff where it's easily reached. The rest of it's all alphabetized up top. Um, I'm gonna make my life a little bit easier here. I'm always a huge proponent of using gloves in the kitchen. I love it. it makes me feel more professional. It makes everything easier to clean up. However, um, more to the point of what I want you to comment on this, if you watch it, I don't even give a shit if you like my show anymore. Um, I hate these gloves. As someone who uses gloves a decent amount of times, uh, just let me know. If, if you use gloves in your daily career, you know, maybe you're a nurse, you're a lab tech, I don't, I don't know what you do. But if you use gloves, let me know. Vinyl gloves are the fucking worst. I hate these things. Um, they're easier to get on than say like, uh, well, what the hell is that other material? Not latex. Um, God damn it, it's not nylon, it's the blue stuff, and I cannot think of it. But it's easier to get on the nose, but it doesn't fit as well. There's always loose pockets, it always feels weird, and it's not like watertight. Whereas like the other glove, it, it grabs your wrist. I, again, I'm ranting, I'm sorry, okay? You know, you would rant too if it's your first ever YouTube episode. You're, doing, you're, you're pursuing your dreams, huh? You think, that, you think that's nice to judge people based on that, huh? It's not, it's not at all. Okay, back to business. We got our mix, we got our mix. Two cups instant masa harina, cup and a quarter of water, dash of salt, and then the seasonings as you see fit. Now, I will give a note, you may have to add more, more masa or more water depending upon the consistency. We're gonna trial this out. I'm gonna go ahead and pull, I'm just gonna put this on the counter here. This is my uh, tortilla press. You don't need this. It's cheap. That's why I have it. Um, because I'm a frugal, cheap bastard. 
obviously. Uh, it's cheap. It's it's like three bucks, four bucks, maybe. Okay, I'm, I'm probably underselling it. May, let's say nine bucks at a Mexican grocery store. It's not bad for an actual like piece of kitchen equipment. Um, you get one of these. They're very easy to come by at a local Mexican grocery store. I just have two pieces of butcher paper here. If you if I include any of the clips from the last time I tried this, it took me about seven shots because it was terrible trying to separate the tortilla from the surface. Parchment paper works best, but you don't want to let it crimple because when it crimples, it changes the surface area geometry and then the, the tortilla goes into those crevices and cracks and gets all fucked up when you try and take it out. Um, here we got our bowl. We're going to go ahead and start mixing. I don't think we're going to have to add any liquid to this, but we will see. You want a shaggy kind of dough. Um, I would almost describe it as kinetic sand or perfect, perfect sandcastle sand. You want to be able to press it together, but you also want it to be able to crumble a little bit. You don't want too much water in this. However, it's not um, irreparable if you have too much water, you just add a little bit more uh, masa to it. Or, you know, if you were making bread, I guess you'd add a little bit more flour. You balance out that moisture ratio by adding your, your dry ingredient and your, your liquid. That's how you balance it. Um, in this scenario, I think we're pretty well, pretty well balanced in all honesty. That water wasn't super warm. Um, and again, that doesn't really matter. That's just my own. It's going to increase it marginally. I mean, absorption. Heat's going to create, not capillary action, but it's going to create expansion within whatever sort of porous chambers or particles you look at, be them grains of flour or masa. You know, it, it, heat's going to cause things to expand. And when things expand, they create a volume deficit, and that volume deficit creates a pressure deficit, and the pressure deficit creates suction. Or in this case, chemical absorption. Like a micro version of capillary. I, I'm talking way too much about engineering that I haven't used in so long. Yeah, this dough is going to be absolutely perfect. Check that out. See that right there? See, it kind of breaks apart. Don't look at the little chunk that I let drop out of my bowl. Yep, perfect. And see, it doesn't stick to my hands like it did the other night. I was just plastered. It looked like I was being battered for frying. Um, be responsible. That's scotch and water. I don't know why I said be... I'm not going anywhere. I can do whatever I want. It's my show. Welcome to my show. Welcome to... Welcome to the M&M show. I'd like to welcome you. I, I don't, I'm not, I, my flow is not fast enough. I could never be a rapper. I'm so glad I didn't piss off MGK. That would suck. I, I just sit there like an idiot. I mean, what, what am I going to re rebute? Rebuttal? Rebuttalize? No, it's rebute. I think it's rebute. Yeah. Okay. So. When you're kind of prepping your tortillas, you're going to have to get your size right. And it does take a little bit of practice, and that's okay. Um, I try and go for the size of a ping pong ball. You're not going to know what's right until you throw it in the press and squeeze <laughs> squeeze one out, you know? Just throw it in the press and squeeze one out, eh? It's, it's not going to be gross or anything. The term squeeze one out. Put it, I, I kind of put it towards the hinge. Just because of the way the force is applied and how this thing comes down, it's going to spread that away. Uh, if you put it in the center, it's going to start off center. If you put it over here, it'll kind of push it to center. It corrects itself just a little bit. Um, what I would recommend is if you have separate sheets of paper, that you use your hands to kind of secure it in some way. Especially when you come... Oh, Jesus. Actually, that came out beautiful. I'm a-okay with that. That is a perfect tortilla. We put that there for right now. We're going to go ahead and come over here, and we're going to start up our skillet. Um, we're going to take a little break just so I can rearrange the cameras a bit. I shouldn't tell you that. That's the magic of TV. Hey! We're going to rearrange the cameras. We're going to come right back, and then uh, we're going to start cooking these puppies up. I'm going to start squeezing these out. 
like uh, hot cakes, you know, and we're going to throw in these uh, cast iron skillets here. So uh, just hang on. You won't notice any of this. Enough. It's already very hot. We'll try the first one to see what happens. I'm going to use camera two over here as kind of the close up. Um, given the size of my skillet, I can't really do a lot of these in success, or not in succession, but I can't do a lot of them at the same time. Um, but these cook very quickly. We're talking 30 seconds to a minute on each side. Um, you may get a little bit of puff. That's ideal. Um, well, well, let's just see what happens, okay? Throw it down, dry. There's no oil in the skillet. There's not even seasoned. I mean, I know it's cast iron. I burnt the shit out of the seasoning the first time I tried to make these. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens here. I had the seasoning burn off last time, and it, it worked okay. It worked okay. Um, they still came out decent. Use our plate here to plate them up. Actually, you know, we can keep that closer. The smell, smell of kind of burntish. I'm gonna flip it. See, it's already got a nice color to it. I hope you can see that from that can. Motherfucker. Disregard that. Kind of like making pancakes, you know? A little bit of trial and error on that first one. It's gonna probably look like crap, but it's okay, because you put it at the bottom of the pile. Just like any company that ever says, we're only as strong as our weakest link. That is true, and then they hide the weakest link away, deep, deep within the recesses of their organizational chart. Mm. I hope the weather, wherever you're watching this from, is as nice as it is here. Um, we're finally getting a taste of fall. Uh, yeah, it's complete beef filler bullshit. If you're only watching this to learn how to make tortillas, you can disregard this whole bit. It's really nice weather here, and if you're a if you're a local, if you're a tall center, even if you're an Oki, man, it's awesome. We're finally getting fall on time. This is great. I'm loving this. You can wear sleeves. You can wear two shirts. It's all comfortable. There's no heat. There's our first tortilla coming out. Um, it's got good color. I can kind of feel the center of it. It's not. It's not overcooked, it's not undercooked. This is a great tortilla. It is a little thick. I did make this one a little thick, so let's see if these other ones are a little bit better. Son of a bitch, I already tore one in half, guys. Mother fucker. I'll try and do surgery on that one. So the key to making these work is you gotta kinda press the seams. It's like making a weld, only with tortilla dough. So you want to overlap them a little, gently tap them into place, flip it over, kind of follow the same line, tap, 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 tap. Get it to work with you, not against you. Yeah, it's like sewing. Just, just think how it would work. You go inwards. Okay. That should maintain. All done with our tortillas. We're all finished with the first episode, guys. Um, I hope you really enjoyed it. Uh, this is something I really have been wanting to pursue for quite a while now. I'm super happy. Uh, I was kind of laughing. You know, I was telling my parents, I was telling my fiance, when I was putting together, you know, the lights and everything for this. When I actually started to see it all come together, like I was kind of, I was really giddy. Like I was giggling a lot, and I was super happy. I hope you guys enjoy this. I hope. I know it's not going to be the perfect education. These are good tortillas. I know it's not going to be perfect. I don't know everything. I don't claim to know everything. What I'm trying to share with you is just A, my love for food and my shred of a sense of humor. And B, I, I, I don't think everybody should be like me. That's definitely not what I think. But I do think I have something to offer when it comes to how I behave in a kitchen. And that doesn't mean I'm the most professional person in the world, but it means I'm adventurous and I let my feelings and my artistic, I don't know, inclinations direct me to what I'm going to do next. And we're not going to, we don't have to be, a, you don't have to be a douche about that. We're making tortillas for fuck's sake. 
it's not that fancy, but it's just talk with the flavors you want, paint with the colors you want, get to the ultimate image you want. Don't be afraid. Hmm, that sucks. Thank you guys so much for being a part of Chef Kingston. I hope you watch the next episode.